Hey everyone, me should be barking here. I think it goes without saying that one of the main parts of being a furry is the social side of things. Dressing up in your fursuits and going to meets, as well as attending cons and going to parties. While there was always an online aspect of furry, I'd argue that for most, the in-person portion was just as important. Many people, myself included, look forward to when we can take a weekend off and travel to a con to let loose and escape reality for a bit and be a cartoon animal for three days. So what happens when, I don't know, say a global pandemic prevents us from coming together for these conventions or meets? At first, things seemed pretty hopeless and we all just kind of sat around trying to figure out what to do while watching the world around us drastically change. But eventually, we started venturing out, discovering new ways to meet up and be around friends, switching from in-person and physical to the virtual world. How did VR end up being so big? And what about it is so appealing to most furries? Let's go ahead and talk about the evolution and emergence of VR in the furry community. This episode of Bluey is called Ko-Fi, which you can find in the description. YouTube doesn't bring in a ton of money, and I'm prepping to go back to school, so anything helps. Thanks in advance. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive on in. VR chat was created by Graham Gaylor and Jesse Jodry in 2014 and follows the same recipe of similar games such as Habbo Hotel and Second Life. The type of game, I guess you could call it an MMORPG, cause like, you take control of an avatar and that technically isn't yours and like, I, I don't know, not the point. These games are massive online hubs of many worlds that people create, and you're able to explore these worlds by using a created avatar and either play various games or just hang out with friends. While VRChat saw an initial spike when released, the game saw a slow decline in users over the years, with most people using it solely for posts or memes, I'm sure most most of us remember the Ugandan Knuckles thing from years ago. Furry presence on that site was minimal at best, and even if they were there, it wasn't for furry-focused activities, as at the time, gaming via VR chat was the more popular thing to do, but even then, it wasn't really popular at all. That is until 2020. I'm gonna save us a sec of recapping, because we all remember COVID. God, this is gonna be wild when people who don't remember COVID become full-grown adults and watch this. Adults being born in the 2000s already make me feel old, man. This is gonna make me feel ancient. Anyway, yeah, COVID was cool. And by cool, I mean really, really bad. Everything changed, school went online, cons and big events got canceled, and for at least a year, the world kinda grinded to a halt. Unless you were an essential worker. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I can't say I handled this super well. Going from having nine or so classes, three ensembles with four upcoming performances, a campus job, and music composition to just nothing at the drop of a hat. I, uh... Can't say I had the best time. Fun fact, this period in time is what led me to create videos on this channel. That aside though, this was a real low in my life, and I imagine I wasn't alone in this. So naturally, considering the theme of this video, you may be thinking, wow, they went to VR chat, didn't they? But up, 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 you're getting ahead of me, and we're, we're not quite there yet. The furry community was stalled and trying to figure out what to do in the meantime, and the first idea came to be in the spring of 2020. Down Home Fur Con. Down Home Fur Con, or DHFC, took place May 1st to the 3rd, and was centered around streaming various panels on Twitch and Picardo, but Picardo f***ing died, so it was mainly on Twitch. The con was created and ran in direct response to COVID, and was completely free for people to attend. However, you could pay a registration fee and get a badge and a lanyard, and various other goodies. There were 27 panels and 37 artists, whom were showcased throughout the weekend. How it worked was essentially the main channel would stream, and people would livestream their panels on the main channel to discuss or show off various things, mostly visual arts for rough an hour, and when they were done, it'd be passed on to the next panel host. The con saw 1,882 attendees, 7,669 views on Twitch, and 680 people in the con's Discord. Unfortunately, DHFC would only happen this one year, being replaced by a different type of con we'll talk about here in a sec. I genuinely applaud the people running DHFC and will compliment them on trying something in the face of a changing world. However, it goes without saying that it wasn't a solid replacement for in-person cons. One main issue I personally had was the fact that almost all of it was panels that had to do with arts and crafts tutorials. And while obviously this is awesome, as most of the community is artsy and craftsy, I am not. A good portion of panels at conventions are gonna relate to arts and crafts, be it arts or fursuit making, cause as stated before, a lot of furries are usually artists or makers, but cons will also have stuff for other types of furries, such as myself, and DHFC really didn't have that. At the end of the day, it was just watching a live stream on my computer. I didn't really feel like I was attending a con, and it lacked the togetherness of convention spaces. It was a bunch of nameless strangers in a chat all watching panels, and as the weekend went on, I just kind of lost interest. Now again, this isn't me shitting on DHFC. I think they did their absolute best in an awful situation, and for the most part, people did enjoy watching the panels. But I do think that last point was a con-wide issue that unfortunately couldn't be addressed by just streaming panels. So what if we tried something different? 2020 was VR chat's time to shine, baby. What had been a gimmick gaming style for the past six or so years quickly became a genuine and solid method for people to come together and hang out and was very quickly adopted by the furry community as well as many other groups. It wasn't just us. The entire VR chat space saw a boom in usage starting in 2020. People quickly started making their own avatars and making avatar bases for people to buy and recolor themselves to make their fursona in game. What started out as people using two, maybe three bases quickly boomed into having bases for every species and fursona under the moon and being 
being able to find the perfect base for you quickly became as easy as can be. The tracking at first was a bit rough, but that technology evolved quickly too, with people getting full body tracking to better encapsulate their movements for streams or videos, or just to make their sonas feel more lifelike and more them, just in a virtual space. Furries quickly started coming together in these virtual spaces, hanging out and playing games, making new friends and connections we will hold on to for the rest of our lives. While obviously not a perfect replacement, this was a great attempt to fill the hole of social interaction that had been missing since COVID had began. People began using VR to create videos, TikToks, and live streams, and would oftentimes use their models as something known as VTubers, which isn't the focus of today, but is another group that saw a huge boom in 2020. That being said, it still kind of felt like something was missing. Conventions are a time of bringing us all together, and DHFC did that in the way of viewing panels, but now with the exploration of VR chat, another con idea was brewing, one that would last even past the world returning to having in-person cons. Of course I'm talking about Ferality. So Ferality actually started a lot sooner after DHFC than I thought. Like, three weeks after. I thought the November 2020 weekend was the first one, but the first Ferality Con was actually May 22nd to the 24th of 2020. It's a lot of twos. That being said, it was, like DHFC, a fairly small event, and was really only hyped in the, at the time, much smaller VR user base, seeing roughly 2,700 attendees. Now this isn't anything to gawk at, those are stellar numbers for a debut con, but it was also free and anyone could attend, but this new type of con definitely had promise. Though small, Ferality was showing that it could do more to mimic the con experience than DHFC, with meetups and dance events being genuine possibilities. They showed the world the power of Ferality and VR chat as a whole, and drew many more furries to this virtual space. Ferality, since 2020, has been happening roughly every six months, with the next event taking place in November. This one only saw a slight uptick in attendees, but considering this was also when con registration fees were added, that's still genuinely impressive that they saw the numbers go up. Speaking of registration fees, you could also pay a little extra to get downloadable asset packs. Think sponsor level registration for cons, it was very similar to that. Roughly 400 more furries attended this iteration of Ferality, bringing our total up to 3,100. While the bump in attendance might have been small, the performance of Ferality is where the most improvement showed, with the world and web portal, as well as any live streams, being much more stable, and once again raising the bar on the abilities of VR cons. This is why for June 4th to 6th, Ferality saw its most ambitious project come to life, and saw its attendance numbers more than double. Ferality Luma featured five new worlds themed on the bioluminescent forests of the fictional planet Luma, filled with magic crystals and glowing plants, where magic and nature unite to create an environment best seen by its own light. From what I'd seen, I owned a Mac, so I attended none of these cons, but from what I saw through friends was this world was genuinely beautiful. Luma also included a dealer's den, where you could buy physical merch from artists and makers in attendance. Lastly, a shader designed by Nato Okami helped with the immersion, as your character would react to the bioluminescent lights all around, and caused you and roughly 6,800 other attendees to become more of a part of this beautiful world. Ferality Legends took place on November 5th and 7th of 2021, and was superhero themed. This Ferality included a lot of the stuff we saw from Luma, including panels, dealer's dens, meetups, and more, but this time in a virtual city. NATO designed another shader this year to help you fit the comic book aesthetic of the con. Not much else to say other than this Ferality saw 2,300 more attendees from just earlier that year, bringing our total up to 9,000. Ferality Aqua took place in June of 2022, and this was around the time where, for better or worse, the world was opening up again, and in-person cons were really starting to ramp up once more. So would Ferality slow down? Would the virtual cons slowly die off now that cons were returning? Well, to put it simply, Absolutely not. With Aqua seeing a whopping 15,000 attendees, 6,000 more than Legends, Ferality proved that it was here to stay as a convention in this community. This is easily the largest uptake in attendance this far, and is an unbelievably impressive feat. Aqua saw many back-end improvements to keep up with this attendance boom, and attendees saw little to no technical issues throughout the weekend. Ferality Luma Festival saw a dip in attendance, but this was also a smaller event, favoring meetups and galleries. This took place on February 17th, 2023, and was a 30-hour continuous event, as opposed to being three days like the prior cons. The most recent Ferality was Silva, and immediately picked up where Aqua left off, raising the attendance once again to 15,160. Silva took place from June 2nd to the 4th of 2023 and featured a rainforest. A rainforest, if you will. Okay, okay, sorry, I know. Silva featured much of the same, panels, meetups, dances, but honestly, so does every other convention. So this isn't a diss on Ferality, I'm just running out of new things to say. I will end on this though. With Ferality Silva's attendance numbers, this made it the biggest virtual con in the world and showed that Ferality is here to stay. As a matter of fact, Ferality 2024 is in the works, planning to take place June 6th to 9th. And honestly, now that I have a better computer, 
I might try and attend this one, and maybe I'll see you there. VR has also been used in the content creation side of things. Much like the first few videos that were everywhere in 2015, VR furs will slap on their avatars and do silly little skits or make full-length discussion videos. VR chat is also a wonderful tool for furries to use to easily collab with others, be it for videos or streams. I want to finish off this video by talking about a couple of furries who have been using VR to create some awesome content, so be sure to check them out in the description when you're done here. Woofles the Wolf is a furry YouTuber who recently just hit 1,000 subs. He's been making videos in VR chat discussing various broad furry topics such as how to make friends in the furry community and what inspires him, or what turns people into furries. He's got such an adorable Sona and an even cuter model. I also just so happen to be watching a video of his like a month ago and who else but your boy would show up in a scroll of furry YouTubers. I'm never gonna get used to being known by people, am I? Little Alpha Pup, also known as Milo, is primarily a TikTok creator, making short videos usually consisting of an inspirational quote and a very soothing voice. It also seems like his videos come up on my For You page at just the right time, and you can't help but smile at them. Milo also uploads on YouTube and has made some music as well, so be sure to check those out. If you have any VR furs that you'd like to mention, feel free to drop them in the comments below and why you like them. It's amazing how much VR has become intertwined with the furry community. What started out as a hub for mostly memes became a place where memories are formed and where people's paths crossed and lifelong friends were formed. It took an awful situation and shined a light on it and gave many furries community and togetherness when we couldn't in person. Many creators found their start in VR, having their channels grow immensely during this boom, while others just found a new way to exist in a body they could look at and love in the comfort of their own homes. A lot of us, myself included, have many self-image issues to the point where sometimes I look in the mirror and don't see someone worth much. But when I wear my fursuit or make these videos and get to be a dog known as Misha, I feel a sense of confidence and pride I wish I could put into words. While I haven't tried VR chat personally, knowing that it can provide that sense of comfort for others and let them feel the self-love and confidence they deserve, it makes me love it already. It makes me happy that us furries have found another wonderful way to become our sonas and express ourselves in a way we hadn't yet explored. Let me know if you use VR and what you like about it, or if you want to dive into VR. Also, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you thought about the video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!